Ah, test, 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 and horrible of the horrible. Ugh, God, that's way loud. All right, turn you down. Test. Record one now for a fucking radio check. All right, go loud, test. I am loud, eh? Nah. All right, that should be good. Not very good. Yeah, man, that looks reasonable. Yeah, God, I should have got some more beer. Are you Are you sure about that? <laughs> sure about that? Was, that? was that your best interest? I don't think so. All <laughs> <laughs> <All> right. I'm just inviting you, man. Hey. Because you're awesome. But you're awesome, too. Okie dokie, you got that. Right, don't don't, don't, don't even get Southern. Yeah, yeah, don't even, y'all. Y'all don't even get her started Southern, all right. Well, she <clears> is. <throat> she is very Southern, and that's a fact. But. Man, well, yeah, you need to get <laughs> on with the show. It is 127, <laughs> so let's go with one, let's go with two minutes at, at the two minute mark. We'll start. And that's a 30, 25 seconds start. I'm only half Southern anyway. I grew up in Oregon. Mm. That's like Southern Portal. Seattle. That's just south of Seattle. That's like Southern Seattle. That's about Seattle. five hours south of Seattle, actually. That's like the Southern it's, Seattle. It's quite people. a drive to Seattle. I've only been through <laughs> Seattle. I've never stopped. Never stopped in Seattle. In five, in four, three, two, one. Ching. Welcome to the Chainsaw Bar. I'm your host, Mike. Today I'm joined with... Madeline. And... Uh, Gino Bonelli. Fantastical. We're going to be talking about comedy, horror, and all that jazz because it was April 1st. We were trying to do this on April 1st. We f- f- failed by about eight days. And epic, now... Epic fail. Epic fail. And now DMX is dead. And Prince That's Phil. That's tough, man. That's who. Cool. Yeah, I'm really... Like, up in here, I'm, up in here. Mm-hmm. Up in, I am really like heartbroken up in here about this. Really is, oh man, it's uh, just like what? Like I, I, it is not just for the nostalgic reasons that that was like a soundtrack to a certain part of my life. It's because I think DMX was an incredible artist, artist who just allowed himself to be so vulnerable in a way that very few artists let are able to present themselves. And like other than like the the radio hits that got airplay like if you listen to his albums it's like he was a very deep and very troubled and tormented dude and i have i just i wish his family well rising power yep. okay sorry oh, i was like crying earlier so i better now I'm better yeah dmx was a damn icon for our generation sort of legend all right uh, legend. Hey, uh, hey, uh, growing up in the in the nineties and stuff, mm-hmm. well, we uh, we listened to him, and he is he is a very good artist. And up in here, up in here. <laughs> so you know, I mean, Gee, you like are gonna make me lose my but, mind. But they, mm-hmm. but there was some damn crazy lyrics that he had that mm-hmm. were insane. Yeah, that whole like struggle with good and evil that was like the backdrop to to so many of his recordings and. Yeah. Other people weren't doing that back then, you know? It wasn't the thing. Yeah, he wasn't the damn push. He was pushing his damn he addiction, was, and he was just like being honest with it. And he, and he was pushing it. the envelope, too. He was like, here, future hip-hop artists, future artists in general. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm telling you what, man. Tell he people, was a, tell he, people he the was, truth. He was a custom motherfucker. Is all right, man. Yep. Well, that, too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he wasn't a damn back Most intelligent guy. people cuss. So I read on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. All right. So that's what we got. We salute you, DMX, on three. Mm-hmm. Three. 
Like, I actually are we won. Doing the, we'll give the him a chase? chainsaw salute. For I was going to do a Rough Rider, but okay. You want to do a Rough Rider? <laughs> I'm not going to. I really don't bark. I don't bark. I'm either, more of a but... cat person, but yeah. Okay. I'm just going. I'm just. I'm just going to say uh, up in here, up in here. <laughs> On three, we'll do a we'll do a salute from the chainsaw bar to wherever you are, DMX resting in power. Hopefully, one hundred percent. One, two, three. Three. Salute. <laughs> <laughs> Broom, broom. You'll be missed. Up in here. You'll be missed, brother. All right, people. That's the that's a harsh start to the comedy episode, but there we go. <laughs> I know. And, Irony. And Prince Philip died, so there you are. And he was ninety nine, so there's 99. a big age difference. He got a big. He got a big long life. He got a big. But long it is life. kind of weird to think that we're gonna have. Like, yeah, at I'm some point, Queen Elizabeth's gonna die too. Yeah, and then Charles will be there for about two weeks and probably die, and then. Then where's it go? One of the Phillips, one of the little boys. Damn. Yeah. That's yeah, strange. that would go to. Um, We're on the verge of a new damn kingdom. Prince. In the England. Oh, in, in Yorkshire. In Upper Yorkshire, near Wolverhampton. Yeah. Hey, did you ever hear of the Battle of uh, uh, the Roses? That was an evil fucking battle. I heard of the War of the Roses with yeah, it's, yeah, it's, that was it. It's the War of the Roses. It's the Red Roses and the White Roses. I'm talking about the movie. She's talking about the comedy. <laughs> oh no, it's not a comedy. You know? I got, it's like twenty eight thousand people died in March in in uh, England, and there was a medieval battle, and it was good. Oof. Yeah, this is a great comedy episode. So <laughs> keep listening, people. We're getting. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to bring it back around to the war of roses. Uh, you know, uh, Kevin okay. Turner and Michael Douglas. And <laughs> now, uh, you know. good stuff. One hundred fucking percent. I, I, now I'm gonna start this shit off. Well, Gene, you started off last time, but you know what, Gene? Started off. Baby. Started off. Go ahead. Ready uh, My my favorite horror comedy was the Ginger Dead Man with Gary Busey as. And uh, he he uh, turned into a, a ginger cookie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. His, his blood went into it, and then it was like mixing it up. And, and uh, Jerry Busey was the the funniest motherfucker there was. You know? Oh, that was a great one. Yeah. I'm glad I got you that shit. That is fucking hilarious. And uh, Mike got me the whole box set. <laughs> that fucking asshole. <laughs> it's so awful. It's so funny. It's so <laughs> just that first episode is the one that matters because that's yeah. very juicy. But yeah. the other episodes it, are pretty. It fun. was, it was uh, the ginger dead man, and the second one was uh, damn uh, ginger dead man two. Passion of the Crush. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. The and then they had uh, the Ginger Dead Man 3, uh, Saturday Night Cleaver. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Oh, man. Yeah, that and was, it was all It was all fun. Yeah, I wish I had Busey on the other two, but we'll take what we get. Sequels are sequels. Yeah, funny, though. Those are just low budget, just humor. Just. Yeah, man. Just cheap. <laughs> Oh, so come good. on, man. I wait, wait until you hear my list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, so that's Ginger Dead Man. It, it's it's full moon features, so. Yes, I so mean, you know what you're getting into. Unless you don't, yeah, but there in you, case you do. Oh, well, if you didn't, if you don't know, now you know. Yeah, check it out. It says full moon. <laughs> you see the full moon logo. Well, you're in for what the hell was that, that, that song? You don't know, but then you know. Yeah. Oh, that was a uh, big small. Mm-hmm. You don't know, but now you know. Exactly. <laughs> Full moon pictures. Now you know. You're you've been warned, people, viewers, listeners. Oh, well, that was great. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. I will like try it. to not fill this whole episode with '90s hip hop re- references, but like I'm in a, you know, yeah, my, I'm in a headspace. I'm in a headspace, no, and, and sorry. All right, let's see. Oh, Only God that. can judge me. Horrible. Just horrible. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, that's, 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 I, that's, hell, that's all I got. All right. Episode yeah, that's good stuff. Wait, that was only one. That's not five. No, <laughs> we didn't do five. We're just like, um, just goofing off. Uh, but yeah, it's comedy. I'm just trying to see if I got any news. 
I didn't collect. Now I have to look up the other news. I thought I seen some news. Uh, Godzilla's apparently doing well on premium Prime Video on demand. People are loving it. I still haven't got to watch it. I haven't watched it. Our son went and watched it at his friend's house. Yeah, we let our son go see his friend. Sorry. Yeah, uh, that people. COVID people. But yeah, so that's the latest big news on that. Godzilla vs. Kong is very popular. We still haven't seen fucking Willy's fucking Wonderland, so we totally suck at that. Yeah, need more Nick Cage. Pretty much, pretty much failing at life. Yeah, but on the other hand, I did watch. Uh, I don't know if you can call it comedy, but I thought it was hilarious the entire time I watched it. I sat back the other day and I watched Cecil B. Demented, the John Waters escapade film, and man, it was funny. It was fantastic. It was. It wasn't over the top like nude and graphic, just craziness that he usually is famous for. But he kind of toned it back a good bit. And Why? yeah, it was it was real enjoyable. I enjoyed it from start to finish. John Waters is always comedic. There's always a comedic element to anything he does. Yeah, it was fantastic. Like he doesn't take anything completely seriously. So like, including yeah, his mustache. Yeah, Cecil B. Demented is the director of this film. He's guerrilla war. He's guerrilla filming a movie and kidnaps a woman, accidentally kills another woman, and then they're on the run the entire movie. And they're just trying to film scenes, jumping in, blowing things up. They're usually hitting all the weird spots. I guess in Cleveland. I guess that's where it's filmed. But I, I was that's not. That's where John Waters is from. I'm pretty sure it's probably filmed in Cleveland. So. A lot of local Cleveland spots are filmed. Oh, shit. I'm trying to think of, uh, what the hell was that? I'm trying to find that damn zombie film. What in the hell? Uh, it was pretty damn great. It was, it, no, it was very, uh, it, it, it was funny shit. All right, good day, James. So why, why is it called Cecil B. Demented? Because it's the director's name. The director of the Guerrilla Warfare movie is Cecil B. Demented. Ah, so after Cecil B. Demented. Oh, God damn. I've got it. I've got it. I'm I'm still talking. All right, right, listen, Maddie. Listen, this is the greatest one. It's uh, Dead Beat Gene, 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 Gene. Stop. I'm still talking, jackass. (laughs) Oh, sorry about that. (laughs) So we're still talking about Cecil B. Demented. (laughs) And it's a John Mars film. Have you ever seen a John Mars film, Gene? No. Oh God. None. None whatsoever. Not even Cry Baby. Not even no. Damn no. Oh no, 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 no! I believe I've seen that. That had a, a Johnny Depp. Uh, Johnny Depp in it. Yes. Cry Baby. Yeah. So there you go. That's a that's a John Waters. It's one of his more damn. Don't, don't make me get my switch played out. I've already got it out. Terrible. <laughs> yep. 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 Quit buying those things. You got like fucking two dozen of them. Quit. Quit. <laughs> anyway, so Cecil so, B. Demented. Uh, I'm gonna use your phone since I haven't got it, but it's a it's a play on Cecil B. Well, Cecil, Cecil B. B. DeMille, DeMille, famous name director. Director of the Ten Commandments. <laughs> there you go. Which, and that's gonna make you laugh right there, <laughs> because this is the genius that is John Waters. He will take things that are sacred. And just desecrate them. Because that's what he does. And then what I did? Just desecrate all horror films. <laughs> just yeah. gingerbread cookies. Just, yeah, just oh, gingerbread. yeah, yeah. I got you. <laughs> so, like, the entire... I, it's actually really surprising when you go back and look at the cast of this film. Who's actually in it? Everybody wants to work with John Waters. Everybody wants to work with John Waters. And especially, like, in 2000... Which was kind of a weird year. That was, that was after Pecker, right? Pecker got some... Yeah, probably. Okay. But he had an amazing cast. Melly Grip- Melanie Griffith was in there. Damn, that's a horrible... Yeah, that's horrible. I've... Ricky Lake was in there. He loved Ricky Lake. Oh, uh, yes. He and Ricky Lake are, have worked together a lot. The young Maggie Gyllenhaal, before she got super, super, famous, super famous with the Batman series. And just tons of stuff. This is regular class too. But Maggie also mostly does indie films, so true. Something I'm 
just throwing it out there. Kevin Neal was in it, just running down the list. Michael Shannon. I, love I, was, Shannon I, I was in that movie. It was weird, but. <laughs> what movie? <laughs> Michael uh, Shannon. All of them. All of them, oh. yes. <laughs> yes. But it's amazing. It's an amazing cast, and it's just crazy. Yeah, everybody wants to work with John. I mean, Iggy Pop was in Crybaby. Like, anybody wants to... Freaking Johnny Knoxville was in that stupid movie that I did not <laughs> like. Sorry, John Waters. Oh, my God. But it wasn't that good. You know the one... Sorry, Johnny Depp, but I was a better actor in that movie <sighs> than you was. Sorry, Johnny Depp. Oh, man. About the thing with your... Ex-wife, but I hear you're getting. Because I took her away from her. And no, she her. accused him of like yeah. beating her up, and then it came out she had really like staged <laughs> the whole thing. It was she was actually the abusive one, and that's just that's fucked up. Because nobody, I mean, like even like his exes, even like Winona Ryder was like, "What?" Like I normally like to believe women when they. When they, you know, are abused, but that's just the kind of woman yeah. that is just manipulative. And I mean, from from the evidence that I have, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. But yeah, the, and my heart told me Johnny Depp just doesn't seem like the kind of guy who's going to beat up his wife. He seems nah. like the kind of guy nah. who probably gets drunk and throws a wine glass across the room when you're tormenting him. Sure, and, uh, aren't we all? <laughs> Yeah, and he got scissors on his hands. Tube. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, so Stephen Dorff was the Cecil B. Demented character. He was fantastic. Ah, uh, Stephen Dorff. Uh, Stephen Dorff. What, what happened to him? That's a, I don't know. It's a mystery what happened to Stephen Dorff. He hasn't been on a lot of stuff, but he was like so important in our childhood. Yeah, he was on a lot of good stuff that we've seen. Oh, hell yeah. Like Pirates of the Caribbean shit. And that's... I'm not talking about that. Johnny Depp anymore. No, Johnny Depp. Stephen Dorff. <laughs> Stephen Dorff. Cecil B. Demented versus... Standpoint, Gene. This is why it's hard to have you, like, on the box. Because, God, you get distracted. <laughs> because but, I'm a horrible person. Have you got your headphones on? Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah really good, yeah. Pay attention to that, damn it. But, um, I'm going to wrap that up with uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal's satanic damn character. She's pretty funny in it. The fact that they all had tattoos of their favorite directors... That they had designed and then tattooed onto their bodies was awesome. Curse hers was freaking Kenneth Anger. Oh, of course. Of course. And just like everybody, <laughs> everybody like had their favorite director's name tattooed across their body as part of his Cecil B. Demented's damn cut. So you had to make sure you had your favorite director and you committed to it. Right. That level. <laughs> damn, what was a horrible people? Yeah, I I had have a it's hard a time. Then, yeah, it's a cult. <laughs> I'd have a hard time figuring out my favorite director and tattooing like a fancy name of him across my body somewhere permanently. Nah, like I said, uh, I'm not I, doing it. I mean, no, but you could because we've already had to say what your favorite movie was. This Here is on true. the Chainsaw Bar. What was your favorite movie? Uh, this is the the big job big before. Massacre by God with the. Uh, what the hell? I, don't, I, forgot. I forgot the fucking director. Yeah, because he's. Toby. It doesn't have to be your favorite horror movie. It can be your favorite movie movie. Like Mike can, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not big on directors anyway. You know? It's like I, I like their movies, but I don't know. They're John not the Carpenter. Famous. What do you say? What do you hear when you when, as soon as you think John Carpenter, you think of a huge flashback of all his great films. That's a name you could put across his chest as John Carpenter, like in blood. Uh, I'm seeing you like either with John Ford for The Quiet Man or. Mm. Ingmar Bergman for Casablanca. <laughs> yeah, one of those two is actually pretty <laughs> fucking fantastic, but like they only had those two films, whereas damn John no, Carpenter. No, they like, didn't. John Ford directed so many, but okay, but he didn't direct all of your favorite films. He didn't okay, watch any. Yeah, he didn't direct any films past The Quiet Man. Honestly, that I watched. Wow. He may have directed maybe another one I've seen, but I don't you, can't remember. You probably have seen a lot. Yeah, but it's not like in my favorites. I was like, yeah, Quiet Man was the high water mark for me for John Ford. Hmm. And then uh, Yens are my favorite directors. I'm gonna get Maddie on one cheek and Mike on another. <laughs> <laughs> and, Sit on it, yeah. as the Fonz would say. Sit and twirl, you filthy animal. 
Because <laughs> I love you guys because you're the weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's coming from the damn black kettle talking shit to the damn black pots here, Dick. <laughs> All right, well, if you get Gene put that tater in your ass, and there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, so horror comedies. It's kind of hard. It's an interesting little spectrum to cover when you think about it. Like, you've got Ginger Dead Man, of course. You have the whole... Oh, God, yeah. You've got, like... Oh, all the God. S- oh, shit. The fucking Evil Bong. The Evil Bong series, yes, which was running from whatever to whatever and was released every 420. It wasn't the Killer Bong? Yeah, maybe yeah, that's what it was. The evil Killer Bong. Yeah. Either way, it was still bad. It was still just like, all right, there's a Killer Bong. Maybe I was getting high by the time. I'm getting know. drunk, yeah, probably. Yeah, no. But, uh... Yeah, yeah, the killer bong, that was just bizarre. I actually had to sit down and watch the first one because it's one of the collections. And it's just as bad as you imagine it was. It's it's a full moon probably production, I'm pretty sure. Oh god damn, you know one hundred percent that if fucking if it's if it's that stupid, yeah. Yeah, but Yeah, but why not? If you're gonna make it stupid, make it yeah, make really it too. Stupid. You know, make what I mean, really make it stupid. That, you know? go all out. It's like at one time, by God, uh, this is even uh, a real of it. By God, is that teaching Chong's? By God, now it's a great movie. Most of it, their films were great. Not horror, oddly enough. Weird thing. No, 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 but we yeah. think outside. We, we're going to think outside of the box. Yeah, Cheech. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, this is true. Cheech wasn't, wasn't from Dusk Till Dawn. That's a damn amazing Oh, film. God, that was a... That was a great film. That's so, what that was. There you go. Yeah, so Cheech made it, and he did some horror movies. Cheech Actually, Aaron Chung was, was in them, the Evil Chung? Bongs. Was Tommy Chong in... He is in Evil Bongs. Evil Bong? Okay. Yeah, so. Or Killer <clears throat> Bong, as Killer we Bong. established it was actually called. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> I guess both of them, they actually went into horror. So good for them. Good for them. They were funny bastards. Funny yeah. shit. Funny shit. But, <clears throat> yeah, it's an interesting spectrum. You can definitely put just about anybody that's a A-list actor and drop them down to the damn B-list and put them in a horror movie, and it'll still be good. I'm sure that they were ever qualified as A-list I'm actors. just saying you can do that with anybody. I wasn't okay, yeah, you know, yeah. referencing the... Damn, just hey, I'm <laughs> smoking cigarettes. It's hubby. Mm-hmm. But these are fun facts about them horror movies. How diverse they can be. They're a, it's a genre, of course, but it's just like the comedy that's out there is sometimes so sublime you kind of have to think about it, and then eventually you get the joke on some of these films that they set up, mm-hmm. and it's just like oh, that you waited till the end to get that. It's like oh, that's the joke. Yeah, pretty but, funny. It's it, it's it is great. Uh, one way you look at it, by God, it's. Uh, 90s and early 2000s crazy ass films, man. I, I love them. I don't give a damn what anybody says. Yeah, because they were like the spoofs, like all the them. Some of them were really garbage. Really, a lot of them were garbage. A lot of them were crass, but <laughs> they just, were it's all... It's just not my sense of humor. Yeah, like all of the them. That entire genre of them, the spoof horror movies. Uh, the yeah. Wayne Brothers did. All those yeah, are just... I did you not hate, like, those are the ones you're, talk, you're thinking about. I'm thinking... And those are fantastic. Uh, uh, scary, scary movies. Scary movies. And those scary said, movies. You said yeah, before I, I did, by God. I didn't like them. Yeah, you didn't like them. They, was, uh, they was horrible. I had the Wayne Brothers and stuff like that. <clears throat> they was not very funny. I don't know. You, <laughs> I, no, it's just bathroom humor. and It's really that damn really really condensed bathroom humor. And if that's your thing, then you're going to love them, and that's cool. We all have different things. And that's why those movies got so many sequels, because mm-hmm. apparently a lot of people loved them. A lot them. of people loved them. They're funny. I love them. I can't and it, them. And you know, the thing about horror comedy is that for people who have a hard time watching horror movies... Yeah. But like comedy... It, mm-hmm. You know, it kind of marries the two together in a way that is a lot more palatable to a wider audience. So, so whatever your sense of humor is, and whether that's, you know, Monty Python or Mel Brooks or, you know, whatever it is. John Waters, yeah. John Waters. If it's, you know, uh, 
the Wayans brothers. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, oh. If it's if it's Jordan Peele, but the thing about Jordan Peele is that he's different. When he does comedy, he does comedy, and like his horror, people are trying to say this is the crosser of comedy. But I just mm-hmm. think straight up fucking horror. Yeah. That I have like too much white guilt to really <laughs> handle. Yeah, but Jordan Peele's like comedy. But no, he's a goddamn he's genius. His horror movies he's are oh, so that far was, fantastic. That fantastic. was a that was a great one. The first one he came up with and stuff like that. that Get was, out. I, I forget the damn name. Get of it. out. Pardon Get me. Out. You know. Was it Get Out or was it them? Us. Us. It's either Us or Get Out. Those two were his big horror movies he's done so far, and those are both did, they're crazy. He, he was involved. Was he the director or producer of Antebellum? I haven't watched it yet. That's, like I said, I have like this get out. I, I kept getting hypnotized. It's like everybody wanted to be black and stuff like that. And that was the funny part of it, you know? <laughs> Wait, no, yeah. the, with the scary movie? No, what he's talking about with the, the us or uh, get out. Oh, with get out. Yeah, because they kept stealing the bodies of black people, yeah. I don't think and then yeah, it's still uh, and it's like but I fell it's asleep, popular. So. It's kept, popular to be black. Yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> like everyone that in that film. Spoiler alert: if you haven't watched Get Out, that's pretty much the theme of it. It's like you know, all these like rich white people are trying to damn be like like extending their lives and they're taking over these young black people's bodies and living through their bodies and that's their new bodies. Because it's, it's popular to be black and all this and that. I, it was a great movie. It's funny shit. That See, was I didn't get that far. Every movie. time she, like, clinks her spoon on the teacup, I I would faint and, like, pass out and fall asleep. Every I've tried to watch it three times. So, Catherine Kinnear, here you are. You're an amazing artist because your hypnosis works on me every yeah, thanks I tried to watch that film. I'm gonna like like down like three um mom, three of those little five hour energies and some coffee. Probably give myself a heart attack because I'm middle aged, and try to watch that in the middle of the day one time and just like she, ear you muff need, it you when need, she does that. You need, she just needs to watch it that that morning and afternoon. Like when I like I love watching my horror movies in the morning. Like that way I can just be unadulterated, just chilling and laughing, and everybody else is asleep. Mm. so that's like I love watching horror movies in the morning like I've watched so many good things here lately on my days off but that's yeah that's one that you can't really watch anytime after like four probably because you'll fall asleep yeah and the most funniest one I ever, ever seen was Cannibal Holocaust <laughs> yeah whatever Gene you're bullshitting <laughs> bullshit artist I didn't think alert. that was a comedy <laughs> bullshit artist alert ding 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 Oh, uh, sure. yeah, I don't watch that. It's real. Yeah. It's not funny. <laughs> I'm going to find a copy of Greasy Strangler and let you borrow that. Make no. You watch that. You've got to watch that just because it'll ruin your life. Your life will be ruined. It will, you. and you'll spend the rest of your days calling everybody you disagree with a bullshit artist. <laughs> I still, I, I can't it's, help it. I, I say this to my 14-year-old all the time. Yep, you're a bullshit artist. You're a bullshit artist. You're a bullshit artist, Gene. <laughs> I'm horrible. <laughs> bullshit artist. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a great, so, great comedy and really fucked up. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, Cannibal Holocaust was really funny. It was like fucking so fucking funny. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, Gene. You're terrible. Uh, don't watch that, people. Um, it was supposed to be funny. Yeah, that don't was do it that. supposed to be funny? No, it was not supposed to be funny. It's supposed oh, to be Gene was supposed to be being funny. Uh, hmm. Miserable fail. Ha. Hmm. Good, but... Everybody looks disapprovingly and shaking their heads as parenting. Parental <laughs> head shake <laughs> <of> disapproval. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't, I don't do cannibal movies too hot. I try to avoid yeah, 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 I'm... I'm... I'll walk in, Mike's watching a cannibal movie, I'll just walk on back out. It's like... Yeah, don't watch that. That is not funny. I'm just kidding. Cannibalism is... I I can see how it could be funny. No, it ain't, though. Yeah, I mean, it was funny in, like, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a good comedy. With with the electric turkey slicer? Yeah, that's... Oh, shit. Uh, That's a great comedy horror. Uh, If you... 
Yes, it, it is. is. And, it, and it is, and it's also a musical, which is like an extra plus for me because I love musicals. Actually, I've, I've been listening, before I found out that DMX died, uh, before that, this morning, I listened to the entire, like, Rodgers and Hammerstein, um, uh, Julie Andrews, Sound of Music soundtrack. I was singing at the top of my voice, and I am not a soprano, as you can probably tell by hearing my speaking voice. It hurts, no, you sound me. Very good. You sound it hurts me to shit. sing like Julie Andrews, because I have to get up in my head voice and maintain a vibrato. Okay, but I did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did it because I really love musicals, and I realized yeah, I still knew all the lyrics to all the songs. We should do a whole thing about horror musicals. Yeah, they're great. Uh, there's so many, and there's so much comedy there. A little shop of horrors. Yeah, oh, uh, God dang. Sweeney Todd. Yeah, the I the plant. The by God, it was eight little pieces shop of cheese. horrors. Cannibal the like musical. Cannibal the musical. <laughs> we, mm-hmm. Which is a Broadway remember. musical, but it was still a musical. Damn, I got I got one. That, there's a good cannibal movie that I could watch. Yeah. But I loaned that to a friend who's a horror movie fan, and honestly, his response was, what did I just see? I was like, uh, genius. Weirdness. Genius is what you saw. Little yeah, Shop of Horrors. There, there's one was made, is black and white, made back in the, I guess the 50s. And it was in the 60s. One, no, it uh, wasn't even that early. It was Steve Martin, wasn't it? It's a black and white movie. And, uh, Steve Martin was the dentist, yeah. And uh, then they had one in the 80s. With Rick Moranis, yeah. Yeah. That's I love great. it. I love it. I can sing the whole uh, soundtrack. In my little Oregon coastal town that I grew up in as a teenager, uh, our local performing arts center did a performance of it, and my friend played Audrey. And... Um, <coughs> yeah, I mean, love it, love it. Mm-hmm. I can sing all those songs suddenly, say more. You got it. Yeah, I've, I've heard it. It's awesome. It's, that's awesome. All right. So in news world, I've just skimmed like news. It's something we'll probably do have to do next week. Like whatever the eighteenth is, the it'll have to be a Saturday, I guess. Nine days from now. So nine days from today being. Whatever on the 18th, April 18th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Shudder is pairing up with Fangoria magazine, and they're going to be doing the 2021 Chainsaw Awards. What they'll be streaming. Oh, are they giving us credit for this? I'm kidding. (laughs) Are we are are we going to get some fucking um. No, we're not. We're gonna get some accidental clicks on our site. Is what's gonna happen. Yeah, like I'm definitely gonna get some more episodes out, and we're gonna have people accidentally click on our podcast because they think that we're affiliated. So we might cool. I'm gonna milk that for what it's worth. Please don't sue me, Fangoria or Shutter. Yeah, you can't sue us. We got this damn name already. Oh yeah, yeah, we we got this. Deal with it. But anyway, Fangoria, we love you. I'm mad. Shutter, you're awesome. And I'm yeah. looking forward to this, Gene. So maybe on the, right. the whatever the 18th is, you need to come over that day and we'll sit down and watch a stream of it and watch the awards on the at the house here. Maybe get some popcorn, grab some damn human heads, and maybe some damn spleens, a couple eyeballs. And just One of our enemies. Sit back and watch. Yeah. But 8 p.m., the damn thing, Boy yeah. Awards. Yeah. We'll have to check that Chains. out. Jamie Lee Cordes is being Jamie acknowledged. Lee. We got, it's being acknowledged. Um, I'm not going to say anything else. We got jo- the Jason Bloom is doing stuff. He's getting credit for some stuff. Doug Jones is getting credited for some stuff. And there are just a bunch of other damn just fun things. So, Did like, I didn't know this existed. Doug, Doug or Dwayne? Doug Jones is the damn color water Jones. I'm oh, yes. Or, uh, Shape of water. Yeah. Okay, Doug Jones. I was thinking Dwayne Jones from... Not a living dead. <laughs> Bitch and Puddin's gonna be one of the presenters from them, the Boulet Brothers. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna be fun, Dragula. So love it. It's gonna be awesome. I don't know. It'll probably be awesome. So whatever. So on the 18th, people, get your damn damn streaming service up. Get your shutter on. 8 p.m. Go check it out. Eastern time. Us here in the mountains are gonna be watching this. 
You should too. That's news. There you go. That's the news. Another DMX, but that's not very happy. This is happening. Yeah. yeah. Bangori and them Shudder put out them, <laughs> them movie horror movies <laughs> awards. Now, I remember from uh, Gloria Magazine, uh, oh, yeah. we'd go Dreamland, you know? Oh, yeah. Down there where... That, it's yeah. a flea market, and, uh, and I would buy all the comic books and um, uh, Fangoria books and because uh, I loved the posters. I had them all over my room, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. And, I, and uh, this one hell razor. And I took it, I was in kindergarten, and I took it, and the backside of it was on Robocop, the guy that, that <laughs> fell in acid. You yeah, found the mutant genetic damn slime. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. And the, my teacher was like, God, oh my God, this is cool. Oh my God. Well, why did you show it to your teacher, Gene? Well, I showed it to everybody, uh, Pinhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Were you on the episode a couple months ago where we found like a 1993 or 1994 copy of Fangoria in, in our. In my house, I was I was just going through old stuff, the old, the old copy. You were on that episode. I don't think you were. I think we. Um, it ought to have been Leah. I tell you, I, I tell you what. It was we, hilarious. We, it was the Event know. Horizon episode. So the cover what, actually has the guy being impaled, like with the spike coming out of his mouth. It was it was great. It was <laughs> I tell nice. you what was horrible is when Mike sent me a damn picture of my damn junior high. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was me. I did. I did forward it to you. Oh yeah, but I, I, she does, I was she helping my it. sister move, and you know, y'all went to middle school together. She was a great over you. And I was like, no. I was like, is... I know Jean's in here somewhere because they went. Uh, he might not go to the same high school, but he went to her middle school. So I went. She was in eighth grade that year, and you were in seventh grade. And I found the picture and I sent it to Mike, and the boys saw it. Mm-hmm. And they laughed at me. They said he had a bowl cut. I said a lot of people had bowl cut back then. <laughs> <laughs> I stood up for you. Yeah. I just thought it was cute. Yeah, it was no wonder I didn't fun. have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> bowl cuts were the shit back then. But that kind of like center part bowl cut. Oh hell yeah. Oh man, she is just totally fucking drunk at people. Sorry. No, I'm the bowl cut's never been that sexy. Anything. Oh, that was a very much. It was the like thing. the cheapest haircut you could get at your house. That was a That's thing. What it was. Look it up. Nineteen ninety, whatever <laughs> that was. Nineteen ninety three. What? I didn't actually know many people with the actual bowl cut, but the ones that did, they were like just had a mullet that year. Poor. I did. I I check this out. I had a in the a year after that. I had a damn. Uh, a mullet. I had a bowl cut and a mullet. Mm-hmm. A bullet. The bullet. Because yeah. Let's call it and, the bullet. And, and check cool. this out. This is what's this is what's funny as hell. The rat tail. Oh uh, yes, yeah, I have one of those. The nineties rat tail. Jesus, my brother had one of those. Both my brothers. Wait, I had like where it was. You had the undercut shaved, and a rat tail. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and and braids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, rat tails were terrible. Never, never could. Uh, no, just now. I might, I might just shave my head and leave a rat tail now, just to. I uh, think I'm gonna do that. Just shit. to aggravate mine. <laughs> yeah, it'll be rat tail again. And... Uh, I, I'm going. I'm going to. Uh, uh, I am going to. I'm going to bring the rat tail back. <laughs> bring it back. Bring it back. I guess. Taking it back. <laughs> Reclaiming. Oh, that sounds so bad. It's such a bad idea. So bad. Yeah, it's horrible. I, I put little I braids in my hair all the time. I just don't care. What if Leah on your phone and have a speakerphone? I don't know. Did you ask Leah if she I was didn't, doing no, this? T- yeah, message her. See what she's up to. I don't know. It'd be funny if we could figure out a way to damn phone with Leah on here and put her on speakerphone on Maddie's phone. It's possible, but whatever. It's just comedy. We're just laughing. It's just having a good old time. What do you guys think about them, uh, Mel Brooks's Young Frankenstein? Horror movie? Or just straight comedy? Well, I mean, it's horror based. What? Sorry, that sounded loud. Um, what? Nah, I didn't see it. Still? God damn it. Shit, Are Jamie. you fucking kidding me? Alright, where's my sign? Well, it sounds horrible. Cool, 
No. Oh, no. No! No, 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 Gene. Go to your room. You're fucking grounded. You're grounded. <laughs> okay, that's loud, but I just realized it. I was trying to draw a D upside down, and I made a B, so now I wrote too loud. Loud. There you go. All right, that's my too loud sign. And Gene, I'm going to hit you with this too loud sign next time I see you, because you haven't seen Young Frankenstein. That's disappointing to me. You have failed in many ways, but that's the most disappointing one ever. Wow. <laughs> Again? Uh, How do you think about Mel Brooks? Mel Brooks. He's fucking awesome as shit, I gotta express and, and why have you not watched Young Frankenstein? Uh, I, I love Frankenstein. I've read the book, you know? It's not like, all right, we got you. Yeah, we're listening. Keep and talking. That, that was the first book I ever read was Frankenstein. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, fantastic. Before Dr. Seuss. And uh, and I watched some old black and white movies and stuff like that with Frankenstein. And there's another one, uh, a modern day Frankenstein that uh, I... Uh, where he went through the North Pole and stuff. Mm -hmm. No, that was, yeah, that was the 2000, early 2000s Frankenstein. Late 90s. Was it early 90s? And yeah. Dennis, uh, uh, Mark Scorsese, no. Dennis, damn it. One of Scorsese's damn underling major crime boss actors. Robert De Niro was the Frankenstein. Yeah, and Robert really? De Niro's Frankenstein, yeah. It was a great one. It was really good. I don't know what year it, it was. It was really great. Yeah, that um, was a nice Frankenstein. His portrayal was pretty on point. I enjoyed it. But it was a modern take, remake idea on the damn Frankenstein genre. But, uh... I uh, made it. The, the, <laughs> first, the first books that I read, you know, besides the Bible... Bibli? Was... Uh, was Dracula and Frankenstein, and then was their first, my first two books that I read. I remember re I did read Dracula when I was a kid. I seen a play of Dracula when I went up to Detroit. It was and awesome. I and I, 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 I that was two books I read. No, that's not the point. The fact is, the point is of this entire damn fucking conversation was you haven't seen Young Frankenstein by Mel Brooks. That's upsetting on many many levels, Gene. I'm gonna actually bring my too loud sign to work tomorrow, and I'm gonna bring a copy of I'm gonna bring my copy of Young Frankenstein on DVD. I'm gonna hit you with a too loud sign, and then I'm gonna put you failed, and then hit you with that too. Then I'm gonna give me lend you my copy of Young Frankenstein on DVD, because that is miserable that you've never seen this film. Then you're gonna go home and go watch it because how how have you lived your life without seeing Young Frankenstein? Seriously, that movie, by the way, that we're thinking of was. 1994, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, directed by Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh played uh, Dr. Frankenstein. Robert De Niro played Frankenstein's monster, yes. Yes. Okay, well... And that I'm was good. really upsetting. It was enjoyable. They took a lot of... Uh, they, they just kept it going, you know? Yeah. Okay. I think it was uh, as good as the we did James that. Whale. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, check this out for all the damn uh, zombie fans out there. Right. Listen to fucking old Gino Benelli. Uh, day before dawn. It is funny as shit, and it's a great fucking move. Day before dawn. Interesting. What is that? All right, give some background on this. I don't. I'm not familiar with this one. Let's see. That sucked. <laughs> That's comedic. <laughs> but I wasn't even listening. I was trying to read something on my phone. I missed the comedy. Damn it. No, I've oh, never... Good. All right. Well, that's some comedy right there. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Gene just finally, Gene just... someone is speaking our language. Gene just got cussed a little bit, and he has uh, responsibilities he's got to take care of. Yeah, uh, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta fucking go over it and I gotta throw my clothes <laughs> down, and I gotta damn do all that motherfucking shit. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, this is only an hour podcast, so we've got like 15 minutes left. So that's pretty good. And you'll have like an hour before you go to bed, so it'll be okay. Nobody asked me what my favorite. We haven't got there yet. 15 minutes? <sighs> 15 minutes. Now, you've been talking this entire time. 
Fair. I've even wrote a, so- a sign that says too loud <laughs> to the response. But all right. Oh, what you got, Maddie? Boring. Like, what are your opinions on the horror comedy genre? I've been watching a lot of them here. But I honestly, I could just... I could, like, say my first, like, top four horror zombie movies. This I, I love horror comedy. I right. love it. Your and not horror. even just B-movies that are unintentionally funny, but the ones that mean to be funny, like... You know what we do in the shadows and shit. Mm-hmm. But honestly, like straight up cemetery man. And some of these are all, you'll hear me repeat myself because some of these have been some of my favorite movies, my favorite zombie movies already. Yeah. Shaun of the Dead, Shaun fucking of the hilarious. Dead. Yeah, that's fucking, hilarious. Um, Return of the Living but, Dead. Not very good. Fun. That's not very good comedy. Sorry. Return of the Living Dead. Oh, I think Night Living Dead. No. No, no, yeah. that Return of the Dead is a straight up gray comedy. Yeah. yeah totally different things. Um, <laughs> totally different films, y'all. <laughs> yeah, totally different films. I love them both. But yeah, that for a comedy. Yeah, for a zom com. For a zom com. I loved. Um, I yeah. thought I wrote these things. Return first. of the Living Dead. Yes. Yes. I had it a great one. I just it, love it. It's, Yes, it's like, what do you think this is, a costume? That's like the best line. Like the this range. job? Yeah. Well, that was pretty good, too. I felt like that when my boss tried to get me to go back to work during the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> like <Yeah>. this job? <laughs> too loud. <laughs> well, he said it too loud in the movie. Okay. No, but um, yeah. But, but con- uh, Cannibal Holocaust, that was like so Wait a minute, just stop, Gene. It's not funny. You're failing. Just stop. I don't think you got funny. You, you're not even a fan of comedy horror. That's what's sad. This is like the least damn yeah, good. Because you just film. said you hadn't watched Young Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein, June fucking Wilder, Madeline Kahn. There is nothing Madeline Kahn could do as an actress that doesn't make me laugh. Yeah. Like anything, and all of her work with Mel Brooks, she just has that. She has that. Thing that yeah. she does, a clue, and there were flames. Yeah, no, and in her was... hands, like oh. pushing the flames out from her face. Oh my god, she's just she was so great. I loved her. In, in young well, I bet I bet she didn't have hands like Edward Scissor's hands. No, nor did she have hands like Bella Lugosi. But, but she had like the hand motion of a, of a <laughs> like crazy woman. Yeah, she was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, like you, we'd have to point her out, do a little damn segment on her, because then you would recognize where you've seen her, Jane, and he'd be like, "Oh, she's great." Yeah, in Blazing her. Saddles, you know, she was like the the, the Marlena German, Dietrich yeah. kind of character. Oh, Blazing Saddles! That was one funny. Okay, well, Jean. the German showgirl. The German, German showgirl. That was Madeline Kahn. Oh, okay, guys. And she, she plays the bride she, of Frankenstein and Young Frankenstein. Yeah. After okay. her fashion. The German woman there. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's not really German. She's not really German, she's American. <laughs> but she is funny as hell. So, yeah, definitely I'm going to go dig around through the movies and find that Young Frankenstein. You're going to watch it, and then someday we're definitely going to discuss this. Yeah. Not probably on the podcast till Monday, maybe. But we're definitely going to damn slap you around verbally about how you've never seen this film. It's like, you wasted your life if you haven't seen Young Frankenstein, people. You've wasted your life. Don't do it. But I don't know, but just because I've been looking through my phone trying to remember what that whole Robert De Niro thing was, I, I haven't watched Frankenstein Created Woman with Peter Cushing. And apparently I really need to. Mm, like Frankenstein Hammer movies. Created Woman. <laughs> no. Hammer movies are fun. No, Hammer movies are fun. Peter Cushing, come on. Yeah. Yes. Well, damn it, man. Damn it, man. We we see the damn uh, the Spanish Dracula that Universal did, and mm-hmm. honestly, it is a bar- vastly superior acted film. It looks superior to the I original Dracula. I enjoyed it immensely. Well, I don't think that the I, I don't remember. I'm sorry, the actor's name who played Dracula. I don't. I don't think he was better than Bill Lugosi, but I'll say the the homie who played Renfield killed it. Killed it. That guy was amazing, Renfield. That was an amazing Renfield. 
Yeah. If you guys ever buy the green box legacy collection <laughs> from Universal Universal Monsters, get the Dracula because it does have the Spanish Dracula version of Dracula mm. in it. Released the same time because they went to the backdrop and when they were done in the in the mornings and afternoons finishing the first scenes of Dracula, the Spanish guys would come in and they do their version of Dracula in Spanish mm -hmm. because Universal thought, let's do, let's do some Spanish like voice movies of our movies so we can sell them to like different districts. Different audiences, different, yeah. The, yeah, our other Spanish speaking audiences. And that's pretty much the only one they did, but it's just stand out. Yeah, no, it's, it, it was really good. I liked it a lot. Anyway, we've been watching a lot of um, horror comedy, and so I'm going to just tell you, my, my favorite on my list here... Ginger Dead Man. I, I watched Velocipaster, and there's a lot of controversy about this film. Uh, uh, probably from, from Catholics, and also definitely from... Um, People who think it's offensive to the Asian community because of the, the ninja stereotypes. And I think, well, you know, that's reaching. Uh, I thought it was fucking hilarious. I thought it was obviously meant to be a parody of all the bad films ever made. The effects are super fucking cheap. They're so fucking cheap. It's like, uh, what was that Shark House movie called? What was that called? House Shark. Gosh. House Shark Cheap. It's like obviously, even when the guy gets decapitated, it's obviously a mannequin head. It's meant to be funny. It was funny. I liked it. It made me laugh. Also, it had like, what did the pimp say that was so funny? Sounds pretty boring. No, no, it's actually really funny. It's about a, um, a Catholic priest who um, gets scratched by an ancient, cursed uh, dinosaur tooth or claw or something and ends up turning into kind of a were-velociraptor, a were-dinosaur, killing bad guys, hooks up with a hooker. You know, it's just fun. It's just a fun film. Fun, really cheap, kind of cool soundtrack, very punk rock. Other than that, we've been watching a lot of other stuff, but one of the things that I made a point of doing was to watch, and I'm going to bring this up because we are talking about funny horror movies. Uh, Peter, Sir Peter Jackson. Sir Ooh. Peter Jackson that, you know, directed the Lord of the Rings movies and all these big epic things. Started out directing these fucking cheap-ass B-horror movies which are, you know, um, cult movies now. So I made a day of it, probably the last time I was on my period, because that's when I watch movies. <laughs> Sorry, right, TMI, funny. but there it is, y'all. I can and I do. And if you're a lady, you know, you wish that was what you could do with it too. So, um, so I just sat there and watched Bad Taste and Dead Alive back to back. Yeah, she watched, what was the hard one? Dead Alive was a hard one that you couldn't find until I got home. Mm -hmm. So That's then I, true. we streamed it via the pirating system, and it was amazing. If you have a strong gag reflex, I recommend watching these films because they're fucking hilarious and cheap. But if you have a weak stomach, it's also super fucking gross. Like, you're watching people drink vomit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and stuff like that. It's, it's uh, gross. You know, I, I about I about like gagged. I, I did. I gagged a few times, but you know, I had never watched them. I always passed it by in the in the video store back in the day when we had video stores. Remember this? Yep. And I thought I, I ought to watch this, and never did. And I feel kind of ashamed of that. But you know what? I'm I'm 41 years old, and I've redeemed myself. I watched them both back to back in one day. Sir Peter Jackson, you are a weird motherfucker. You are weird, and I love you. And I also, you know, kind of dig Tolkien. <laughs> All right. All right, so this brings me to another comedy horror I watched this week. And Maddie didn't watch, mm. but you all should check it out. It was a 2013 film called Love in the Time of Monsters. I watched parts of it. It looked cool. 
It was a blast. It looked really cheap, too. It was real cheap. But it was uh, directed by Matt Jackson. Michael Scavarola wrote the screenplay. I'm just reading straight off Internet Movie Database. Thank you. Produced by Andy Gunn and Rob Goki did the music. But the more important factors to this are two sisters staying in a tourist trap, end up battling toxic monsters, and we're gonna freaking mute Gene's damn ass. Gene. I'm watching my hands. Mm. Yeah, he was watching his hands. But either way, there's background noise. There's background noise. Anyway, don't <laughs> and do then that, washing Gene. his hands. Uh, at least he washed his hands. I don't think he actually washed his hands. Anyway, so back to my story that you were. <laughs> Whatever the hell you were doing, you don't there. edit that this all out. I don't. I think uh, the problem with this is we really can't, because it's really hard to edit that out. But I'm gonna go through there and edit the shit out of it the best I can, because it's just I'm gonna sit there nipping sounds off. Mm. Yes, son of a bitch. So love the time of monsters. It's horrible. Love in the time of monsters, which has nothing to do with the Gabriel Garcia Marcus novel Love in the Time of Cholera that I could pick up on. Yeah, but it was a fantastic comedy horror, and oh man, it was just fun. There were radioactive monsters, a bunch of potheads become radioactive monsters. You've been spoiled. Spoiled, deal with it. But I'm not going to tell you how it ends, other than it does. But up to that point, the facts are this horrible tourist trap made by this like Eastern Bloc guy that came to America is all I this... I thought it was Canadian. No. He's like American... very northern? He's... He sets up this tourist trap location, and it's all just like super America. Like, America's oh, yes. the most that's amazing... Right. That's why I thought it was Canadian. America's the most amazing thing ever. And that's just his opinion of it. It's like, American dream. And he's got all these, like, little things, like the 1950s, like, Hawaiian set up. There's a Hawaiian show. There's mm-hmm. a bunch of dang... There's a guy walking around dressed as Abraham Lincoln... They have a big yeah, like, yeah, that's really horrible. Yeah, yeah, it's actually a horrible tourist trap. But it's really funny because it's just like he's a he's not Russian. He's I think Czechoslovakian or Ukrainian maybe, but he's got that Russian and sounding accent that everybody just like says Shut Rusky. And it's just like whatever here for America. And they like the regular town folk just despise him because he opened up this crazy America theme park family lodge and he has all these things that are just amplifying how much he likes America. It's all it's like a cracker barrel threw up on the fourth of July. Exactly. Yep. I, I, I just what, caught some what have you got to do is you got to go to the cracker barrel and <laughs> Uncle Slavkov's Great American Family Lodge. Yeah, that's uh, in the be- in the best thing that on there is slubbing in it. You like America? We love America. Yeah, Sonja Slavka is just this like like big old dude played by Michael McShane, an amazing actor, and he's doing a great. Is he related to Ian McShane? Probably, but he's just doing a great performance here. But that's not even the big factor. Michael Machine was awesome. I loved him. His character, the story, the fact that he has a bunch of... He's rewrote a Bigfoot monologue story that the tourists have to walk through like five times. And the regular pothead actors are all getting mad because it's like, this is the fifth rewrite we've had to do this season. And he's <laughs> just rewriting. It's like, now it's like the Bigfoot is like the best friend of the little people that are the tourists. And they just keep rewriting these things. Like, they're all just sitting here trying to get through. It's like, damn it, we have to do this act. And this tour guide walks into it, and the Bigfoot shows up. And then they have to do all this crap. It's just like a really bad walk-through Mickey Mouse bullshit land. Damn it, man. This one. Yeah. That's no, like that's a fun. Disney Properties LLC, whatever. Mickey Mouse. We appreciate you. <laughs> Don't sue us. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Ghost. I'm for, like, breaking my fucking neck. What? What? The Red Devil. Oh, no, that's not... No, that's something totally different. I was just saying, Disney Corporation, don't sue us. Because I used the word Mickey Mouse. But anyway, it yeah, is Yeah, they is. could. They could. They could. Remember that band that did that song in the 90s? They got sued. 
Yeah, Mickey Mouse. They is have to spell it different and everything. Yeah, yeah. Disney's a terrible corporation for Super Bowl. <laughs> or, <laughs> or, but anyway, let's jump back to the movie I'm talking about. <laughs> Love in the Time of Monsters. The facts are, it's a funny film. It's comedy. Great, basic, really practical effects. Cheesy as shit. It's like, all right, they're, eat, they're pulling out guts and stuff, and it's just that classic damn big pile of guts being ripped out of a damn body. And lots of screaming queens, lots of damn visual, like, add-on lightning effects. But the cast, now that I look back at the cast, I knew one person, majorly. But then I went back and looked at the cast. This amazing little tidbit had damn Kane Hodder, of course, as Lou. He was the head Bigfoot acting director, like, guy. So Kane Hodder's in it from the Friday the 13th series, mm -hmm. which, of course, you should all know. And he did a great performance. He was fun. It was fun watching Kane Hodder do stuff. And eventually he mutates and becomes this really crazy, crazy big old monster. And it's awesome. Sean Weatherly played Mariana, the wife of Shlopkoff. And then I guess Heather Ray was the girl. Gina Shaw was her sister. They're the two that the story falls generally. And then uh, the... Somebody, forget them. But the main thing is the Abraham Lincoln guy. The, hey, sir. Yeah, the Abraham Lincoln character, the smart scientist Abraham Lincoln guy, is actually... Dr. Lincoln. Doug Jones in straight face with a fake little horrible damn... What Doug Jones? The horrible little fake damn beard. The whole horrible the, fake... The Lincoln beard. Lincoln beard. But it's straight up Doug Jones just being Doug Jones' human face. Hmm. Not being some shape of water <laughs> Hellboy yeah. character. It's just straight up Doug Jones as Dr. Lincoln, yeah. Amazing. I did not realize that. I, I, you sure it wasn't a Jefferson Davis beard? Yeah. I, I was like, I know this face, but you're right. Like, if you don't, you don't really see Doug Jones without his makeup on. No. Very often, he normally plays monster characters that have effects, like like. He's always you know, shaved down. He's always and... got prosthetics on. Yeah. But I was that like, that, 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 that sounds face like me. Yeah. You know, I'm and all always your prosthetics. shaved up and shit. And prosthetics all over your face. Yeah. Makeup, full makeup. Yeah. No, Gene, be quiet. God damn it. Terrible. <laughs> Have, uh, yeah, I've got yeah, that they might be giants lyric in my head. Everybody's got a prosthetic forehead on their real head. Gene, you've never seen a Guillermo del Toro film, have you? No, what? What? Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo. Guillermo. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's on, like, uh, late shit. Guillermo. Mm. Not Guillermo. No, not, not, not Guillermo. Guillermo. From either of the late shows that they're, they have a, a cast member called Guillermo. I mean, there's a true, there's a Guillermo true. on on James Corden, and there's a Guillermo on Fallon, Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neither, no. One. no, not that Guillermo. Not Neither. either of those Guillermo. We're talking Guillermo right the there. director, not Guillermo the musician. We're talking the legendary. Or, or the cameraman. We're talking the legendary. <laughs> no, it isn't. It isn't Jimmy Fallon. Either. No, I'm talking. Stop. I'm trying to think of who's stop, cameraman stop, Guillermo. Is. Stop. I'm talking about the legendary <laughs> visual genius as Guillermo del Toro, which I don't know. The visionary director. That's a visionary director, which is trademark in front of his name now. Visionary, you can't, legendary, and legendary Maybe that's director. what he didn't know who we were talking about. Yeah, Guillermo del Toro. He has done some amazing... Right. You didn't watch Pan's Labyrinth? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm just... Thinking, uh, I really don't know. Did you watch Pan's Labyrinth? He said he didn't know, which means no. Okay, fair, fair. Did you watch Crimson Peak? Uh, no. <laughs> Did you watch The Shape of Water? It won an Oscar. I seen it, Shapes of Water, going down the creek. Nope, that's a move, that's not it. No, I'm just kidding. Nah. Okay, did I you watch? See it. I'm going to watch. Wait, wait, it. wait, wait. You like comic books? Did you watch Hellboy? No. Mm. Did you watch Pacific Rim? No. Jane? You're fucking up, bro. You're like, 
Five for five here. What about most of the kids' ones? Scary stories to tell in the dark? I've never seen it. No, actually, you did see it, and you're really shitty drunk, and then you just talked through the entire film and said, That's not scary. <laughs> It was made for kids. And yeah. it was scary. It's, it's yeah, fine. no, like that's the one me and you went and watched, and then you just talked through the entire film. And I was just fucking pissed. <laughs> I was so mad, you bastard. <laughs> was that, it was that's really not bad. scary. I watched that with the kids. And I was like, it was yeah, scary as shit. Was like, that's like the <laughs> one reason I'm not going back scary. to a movie with you, Gene, because you're a dick when you drink and watch a movie. You're an asshole. Well, the damn thing is, it was, it was fun. <laughs> I don't really think so. That movie wasn't very funny. <laughs> it was, no. Just, well, you know. I don't remember if it was funny or not. I just said it was funny. <laughs> you said you were funny. Yeah. <laughs> I get you. I got you. You can't um, hold your brown liquor, No, seriously, boy. I'm going to tell you what. That, like, Guillermo del Toro is, like, one of my favorite living directors. It's all Mike's fault. He's Mike's fault. I didn't realize you, you were such a wuss with the damn brown liquor. I did not realize that. Didn't realize we shouldn't be bringing brown liquor into movie theaters. Be quiet. Or oh, before, shit. before yeah. assuming that you before you went to the movie theater assuming. Um, uh, yes, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. And um, it was like the time Guillermo del Toro is one of my favorite directors. Like favorite, he's just awesome. I'm smoking a cigarette. He's, he's a hood. He's so nice. And a, I love the fact that he, that he like talks about his mother being a witch, and he's so proud of that. That's <laughs> rude. Yeah, Guillermo del Toro is a fucking. He's, he's a damn. He's a treasure. He's he a goddamn a genius. I love him. His eyes just see things that are so deep and spectrumly they different. They see than into what my see. soul. Yeah, he's <laughs> a he's a fucking visionary director, no doubt. And I've, I've, I, I, I'll tell you something that's funny as hell, by God. I've been to a Pentecostal church. <laughs> You're failing on so many levels, Gene. Goddamn, Pentecostal churches are not funny. They're Unless scary. Unless you're <laughs> there to, like, fucking, I don't know, just get beat up or yelled at or something. I don't know. They are scary. Those are not fucking funny. I mean, are, are those now, I mean, I mean who in the hell would want to dance with that, a snake? That, I mean, that's yeah. broad. You all are being broad. Not at all Pentecostals do snake handling or strict nine spelling. That's that's I mean, dude, that's being like, judgmental. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have religious I mean, judgmentalness. I mean, dancing with snakes is pretty key. Dancing with snakes is fucking awesome. Dancing with venomous snakes because you think if you have enough faith, God's gonna protect you from venom is. Stupid. <laughs> oh, but and I say great. this as like I the mean, most. I mean, dude, who in the hell would want to dance with the damn rattlesnake or copperhead? One in one hand and one in the other. Yeah. Look, it's a crazy, <laughs> crazy I'm saying concept. I'm a person who has like, I have weird spiritual beliefs myself, and I have a lot of faith in a lot of things, but I also have something, a little something called common sense. And I'm not going to push it. But, you know, that's their spiritual practice. I'm not going to knock it. But when you push it on the kids and, like, say your kid gets tetanus or third-degree burns and you don't take him to the hospital. I'm using these as examples because I know somebody who grew up in that faith in a real in a real severe sect. Oh, yeah. His family hey, did not. You know, this was in, actually in, um, in Jackson County. <laughs> This was over here, this way of the mountain. Um, <laughs> whose family wasn't going to take him to the hospital with tetanus and instead have people pray over them. And that, yeah. and, and you know what? The oh, thing geez. is, here's at the end of the day, they lived both times. Tetanus, third degree burns. Lived. But you're pushing it. You're pushing it, and uh, that ain't right, and it's borderline child abuse when you're talking hey, about please. children. So, I mean, I'm not knocking anybody's faith. I use folk medicine myself. Gene, you know I've made you medicines, and you're going to get more well, trouble for that pain. But, but, you know, when it's your kids and they have something serious, like I had a friend whose uh, ex-husband now um, was involved with one of these kind of Severe thing. Not, not all Pentecostals are like that, and I want to make that really clear. 
not all Pentecostals are like that. Some of them are just about Pentecost and talking in tongues and shit. This is... So, I, I'm getting theological. I'm sorry. Yeah. Child right, theologians. Right. And look, um, but I had a friend whose son had a heart condition and her ex-husband tried to not get him heart surgery as Damn, an I infant can... because he thought you could pray him out of it and you shouldn't use surgery. Yeah, me too. No. Uh, yeah, so I mean, Wish you know, you do you, you and and yeah, ditto. Um, but <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not judging Pentecostals. I'm really not. I, I, okay, let, well, let's get into like the. Uh, um, let's get out sex. of this entirely. All right, as the director of this podcast, we're moving back to comedy again. <laughs> So, uh, no, no, good no, 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 Lord, good. people. Jesus. Uh, we've hit the hour mark. I'm going to have to go back and review this damn thing. I'm going to have to go damn edit out some peeing noise. And then I'm going to have to damn tone down some shit, volume-wise. I'm leaving most everything in because, yeah, that's how we are. But, uh, what did we learn this week, people? Let's get to the point. What did we learn this week? What do you want to share with our listeners on this DMX sad damn... Friday night. Hmm. Did we learn Don't anything? dance with snakes. I like snakes. That's a fair call. I'll give you that. I don't think snakes enjoy dancing the way we enjoy it. I don't think venomous snakes need to be fucked with. Well, you see what happened to damn Wallon, by God. Uh, hell. He's like, oh, you know, let's beat me. A stinger I got him. That was an accident, though. I always said that jackass was going to get them. He was a good guy. I will give you that. Uh, I, I thought he, I thought he, he, was, I thought he was going to get eaten by an alligator, man. Steve Irwin was always on my Steve bucket Irwin? list. I said this my no, entire life. No, he's a good guy. Oh, no, stop. I, was, I said this in my entire life. Steve Irwin did all these crazy animal shows, and he fucking ran away from Komodo dragons and all this craziness. And I always said, you know what? That That's a dude that's just going to get hit by a car randomly. Just get run over by a car. Like... He's going to be in Hawaii, he's going to look right, and then look left, and then forget to look back because they go the same British way, and then just get hit by a car. I always said that. It's like, he's just got to do this just to get hit by a car. And it's like, it's just the fucking way of the world. And it turns out he got killed by an animal named after a car. Actually, probably the Stingray was named yeah, first. Yeah, probably but, the car was named after the Yeah, animal. but he got killed by an animal named after a car. And a terrible car. Yeah. The new ones aren't bad, yeah, but they the, suck to get the in and out. Yeah, they, they're pretty cool cars. They look cool. They're like driving a Batmobile, I will say that. If you want to like, have a vehicle you're sitting in and cruising down at night, thinking you're in the Batmobile, that's a car. But mm-hmm. they suck to get in and out of. They're out yeah, you're, you're fucking following them and then roll out of them. Exactly. <laughs> you follow them, then you roll out of them. Yeah, they are the worst kind of vehicle. Well, I imagine Batman's actually, every time I've watched him get in and out of the Batmobile, it's a nightmare too, so. The Batmobile was a fucking Cadillac. I'm just saying, like, this. Not this. This no, ain't no Cadillac. No. <laughs> I'm thinking of, like, the fucking Adam West. It was like yeah. a Cadillac Fleetwood. Come on. Yeah. Classic yeah, Batmobile? You were modified something. I am uh, not. I- it was a Cadillac. I don't, I, don't, I don't give a damn, man. If that's where a Batmobile is, man, I ain't getting it. Yeah, like, just give me a damn, give me Lex Luthor's car, because he just gets in and out of damn limos. We have this guy who lives up our road. I'm not even sure what kind of car this is. It's cute as shit. It's possibly an MG or a damn... Uh, Something like a little two-seater. That yeah, classic two-seater convertible. convertible. It's white. Guy's fucking, like, ball is a bowling ball. Adorable, looks like uh, a super villain, drives a super villain car, but he has like his grandkid or something sometimes in the seat with him. He's probably about three years old and he's cute as fuck. No, nah, I don't wave. Work. Like, I'm like, you are too super villain to wave. You don't wave. You're supposed to be flipping Please, me off listen, or something. I know, I know I'm like way off subject or whatnot like this, but people, if you buy a damn truck, don't jack it up. If you need a damn stoop, or something to get in it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, don't jack up your trucks. Unless you're actually, like, going to go run over some actual other vehicles, don't do it. Because it's just dumb looking. 
you're going to be living in the city. You're in downtown Atlanta. You're going to be living in downtown Charlotte. You're going to be fucking driving through Knoxville. Fuck off. You're not, that, you don't get that shit. That's dumb as hell looking. And then you got rims on it. I got that is not going to get muddy. And I remember one time I uh, uh, got in a vehicle and I got it muddy and all this stuff. And it's like, what the hell, man? This damn mud on my vehicle. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I was like, I was like, dude, uh, and that what you was going for? <laughs> <laughs> it's Mighty's fault. I blame it's her. my fault. 1966 to 1968 Batman television show was actually a Ford called the Lincoln Futura, but it was based, which was built in 1955 originally, but it was based on uh, George Barris's 1969 Cadillac. I'm not wrong oh, about my God Batman. Dang, dude, the 69, 15, uh, uh, my fa- my I'm sorry, 59, Ford, 59, 59, 59, 59, obviously. Yeah. 59, 59. Obviously, with the, with the fans, with like the up to there. The space fucking... Age, the Space Age era. Actually, yeah. the yeah. sexiest yeah. year of, of, of the Cadillac. That was my, that's my favorite fucking car. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Fifth time Cadillac, black Cadillac. That's my yes. car. Well, that's yeah. Mike's car as well. Mine is the uh, 59 Cadillac hearse side loader. That's a good looking Because guy. it's a hearse and it's got suicide doors and that makes me laugh. Comedy. Yeah. I, 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 I love the 59 Cadillac and that's it. Yeah. Bam. Yeah, if we ever win lotteries and can afford just to give away 59 caddies, it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> no, yeah, 100%. 100% like, yeah, that, that's, that was... That was like the sexiest cards ever. Damn. Well, that and the 49 Merc. I'm not going to say. No, the Mercs. Oh, it's yeah. nice. They're different, different cars, cars, but different a, cars, a Merc but... is so mean looking in the front. With you the, see it yeah. done well? Oh, uh, that's so You know, so it's just... Meaner. Woo, woo. <laughs> yeah. Rough Riders. Hell yeah. That's a yeah, great ride. Yeah. I, I love it. Like a 4950 Merc. 59 Caddy. Mm. And actually, like the 1930s Cadillac like hearses mm. were pretty fucking baller too. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah and don't were... fucking chop the top. Fuck that, yeah, man. Top, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, if yeah. you're into choppers, chop them, but make it something that, that needed work anyway. Don't take yeah. something that was pristine. Yeah, okay. I'm not That's against I'm fusion. Saying. All right, but yeah, man, great cars. Uh, sexy, sexy cars. Mm-hmm. Love them, love them, love them. But it was a Ford. The Batman drove a Ford. Interesting. Uh, in the TV series. Yeah. And he but drove it was like, a Ford Lincoln. But he drove custom Fords. Mm-hmm. And in the regular movies, he kind of had his own custom vehicles that weren't based on anything. They were just built by yeah, Morgan Freeman whatever. But, and whoever yeah. the hell. But George yeah. Barris did legendary George Barris. If you were into like Hot Rods, you, you know who George Barris is. Yeah. Did, Look him up. Did Look the, him up. the Batman... The Batmobile, the, the, the 59 Caddy. The West era. The, the, yeah, the Adam West era. The, that we is so iconic. It's so iconic. It's just so bright. It's just it so is. bright. Compared to like modern Batmobiles, that's like the brightest, most almost comic bookish one, but mm-hmm. it's the one of the more sexy looking cool ones. It's like, ah, that thing is the Batmobile. And you it's remember like you that, that, that Bruce like, Wayne was a millionaire yeah. back then, but a million was a million. Um... <laughs> yeah, was was a wealthy dude who could afford a luxury vehicle, and it has all the them. And then it the was things. and then it was Batmobile. It's got yes, s- yeah, screens and them. But he's not gonna, rockets. And he's not going to be driving some Ford Pinto. He ain't driving no damn Pinto. I think he was the first one that said, "Damn it, man!" I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't put past him because "damn it" was the big, big curse word. And if you weren't cuss, but that was it. It was damn it. That didn't happen. It was like, Ow. holy guacamole, Batman. No, you're talking rock stop right there. <clears throat> In fact, you said that. You just and and now he said, holy bat shit. Because Batman never <clears throat> cursed. Just Robin did <clears throat> holy whatever. That Robin was it. Was Robin Batman was never <laughs> damn it. We're pretty sure Batman said damn it, man. I'm pretty We're going to sure. mark that off on the chainsaw bar here. 
Damn and, man, and, and, the first and, time that Batman and, and, Damn it, you clown. And, and Robin said, Damn it, man. No. He said, Holy shit, Batman. Pretty then, sure that was the where he drew the line. It was like Holy no. cheesecake, Batman. <laughs> we gotta cut this so we don't damn get edited on regular TV, which is the only way this is coming out. <laughs> VHS doesn't exist yet. So there it is. Holy Ford Pintos, Batman. Bam! Bam! Bam. Ah, you hit me in the truck, I blew up. Biff! Man. Wow. Mm. Alright. That's, that's our comedy. <laughs> Let's wrap this crap up. Sorry that wasn't funnier, y'all. Yeah, it seems funnier to us. To be. But, <laughs> um, I don't give a damn. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's, well, I got the segments. I wrote. I got my little document about segments. And let's see. Uh, blah 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 blah. If you don't think that's funny, Gents can kiss my grits, biscuits, uh, grits. Mm, um, kiss my kiss grits, my, Mel. Kiss, kiss my mud. Hell for. There we go. All right. Did you say Are we looking for after that? Really? Some bitch. You went all to all the trouble of finding "kiss my butt" out of the recesses of your, you know, filter, Evan. Uh, all right, all right, jump in. And hey, and I wasn't paying y'all. I was, yeah, I was them washing me hands. Squeezing the lizard. I got actually squeezing the lizards for. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing for that one. That's just like, I can't even, just can't. Just can't. I got nothing. That's, I don't even think that's a statement. It is. That's a thing. I did not make that up. <laughs> I did not. That's a thing. I'm going to go squeeze the lizard. I don't think it's squeezing the lizard. It totally is. <laughs> not okay, okay we're going to look this we're, up. We're going to not look this up because people don't don't even, don't even bother. Y'all, All right. Look Y'all. it up on your own time. All right, just stop. Oh, my Leah message me back. <laughs> oh, no. Ask her about squeezing the lizard. <laughs> Gina, when you go to the restroom, do you squeeze the lizard? <laughs> I don't think so. It's not that kind of time, I don't think. Eh, nah. What it kind of does, kind of this just, uh, <laughs> throw it out there. Yeah. Just wave around like you just don't care. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rough Riders. All right. <laughs> Stop. All right. I, should have, I should have been a rapper. I mean, damn it, man. Oh, man. You'd be like UB40 or something um, horrible. Jesus, UB40 stop. weren't rap? That's what I'm saying. What are you talking about? It'd be bad. It'd be bad. Hey, don't tell me. Don't don't let anybody got to get on the WYN. Is that part of the WB network? What? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, Gene. Yeah. <laughs> Waynesville. Uh, never mind. All right, just mm. stop. Stop there. Wait, y'all uh, had your own call sign? Uh, we didn't no, know. No, no, no. no. Maggie no. Valley Mafia. Represent. Mm. Shit, no. Waynesville Mafia. Hazel Hood. WYN, man. West side. Jesus Christ. I hate you all so much. Just hate you all. All right. Let's get to the next segment. And they're all out there listening to West Side Connection. Like, bow down, West Side, Waynesville. Yeah. I mean, they better just <laughs> watch your ass, you know? Uh-huh. And I'm just like, East Coast, fuck you. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And like, two yeah, people right. are going to get that reference, and I'm one of them. And you're the other one, and that, that's the end of the list. Yeah, but then they look up the lyrics, like, East Coast, fuck you, what's that? East Coast, fuck you. And they're like, oh, that's a damn somebody thing. <laughs> oh, that's nothing rap at all. What the hell? That's fucking bouncing souls. That's some bullshit. But anyway, <laughs> kill the vibe here. And let's get back to the point. Did oh, we dude, learn anything this right. week? Did we like learn I anything? Said, like right. I said, uh, did Maybe. I learn anything? I learned that you just didn't know a damn good movie when you seen it. And you didn't know like seven good movies that you never seen. Yeah, you didn't watch like uh, movies that are so much better than like the things that are out there now. Also, like, y'all didn't know squeezing the lizard was a turn of phrase people use. <laughs> I didn't even say that. Nobody says that. I said that. it. That's why. Nobody it's says a that. thing. Nobody says that shit. I'm not making it up. I swear to God, squeeze the lizard. I'm gonna go squeeze the lizard. Stop. It was at least Stop. in one movie. I'm too loud. Just I'm stop. gonna go squeeze the lizard. I did not say that. 
No, Nobody I said it. Nobody says that. Nobody says that. That's why. It's like... Got... Mm. Anyway, back. Mm-hmm. All right, Gene, you did that. You, did you learn anything you want to share with our listeners this week, babe? Uh, Not you, babe. Well, <laughs> Other babe. Now, you already said your <laughs> shit, Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> I I learned that Gene thinks he's babe. All right, babe. Other babe is talking, so be quiet, phone babe. It is babe, isn't it? <laughs> it is babe. Um, I uh, Liz, 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 I got that. I think you were there. Just let him go. <laughs> That's it. Oh, no. All right. Yeah, okay. yeah, I learned when you're old, you don't need to be scrubbing any damn door frames and t- throw your shoulder out. <laughs> but no, uh, no yeah. movie wise, no, I've just been doing a lot of cleaning and, and helping people move. Yeah. That's all. That's all I've done. I tried to watch a movie last night, which I probably should have watched a long time ago, um, and I couldn't finish it. And it was really triggering, and it's not a horror movie, so it's kind of irrelevant to this conversation. So drop it, Dave. Damn, that sounds like my night. It was Coal Miner's Daughter, I'm assuming oh, you were saying no, that. Yeah, just stop. Stop. I love Loretta Lynn. I never watched the damn movie, and I was like, <laughs> oh, hell, this is really heavy. This is really horrible. Like, it's like rapey. It's up from the get go. Yeah, oh, that's horrible. All right, all right, that's horrible. All right, that's good. That's covering it. Um, it's good, though. It's good. It's just hard to watch. I learned... well, well, let's get back to the point since it went off subject. Oh, yeah, thanks. thanks so, sir. back to the point at hand. All right, we're not using those subjects. No more, no more 90s hip hop. Sorry. No, Sorry. no, no. Sorry. I'm just going to flip through anything. It's just aged so much better than I have. No, that's it, really. It is now 1.28 into the recording. Everything is grand here in a Casa de... What the hell would you think it? And all as well. No last name. Oh, yeah. Edit. Fuck off. Casa de Chainsaw, bitches. Casa de Chainsaw. Yes. Bitches. <laughs> bitches. Yeah, definitely there. All right. Note to self, 128. Edit. 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 <laughs> edit. Yeah, man. All right. Good deal. This deal. is your own rule. Yeah, I know. But the dumb thing is, like, once they look on them anchor, it's like, oh, there it is. They give credit where credit's due. I probably should have called myself damn Wonder Pony or something. Spark you emotion. like a damn fake man. Or something. Emotion. Should have called myself Spark Emotion. Can Didn't we change it. that? Can no. we just go back and just change you to Spark Emotion? I'm telling you about my Donnie Darko dream. Gene, have you ever seen Donnie Darko? Well, fuck me. Son of a bitch. Dude, no. watch. Just give yourself a favor. Watch Johnny Darko and be weirded out because it's a weird movie. Hey, have you ever seen Harry and the Hendersons? Yes. Of course. <laughs> grew up in the 80s. You're the freaking Harry. Be quiet. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> big, big foot. All right, big foot, shut up. Let's listen to this. Maddie's got a damn Donnie Darko dream story. Let's no, hear I just it. had a dream that I was hanging out with a friend of mine who is an internet friend who I've never actually met, who lives in New York and we live in North Carolina. And I had a dream. We were having a talk. And her aunt called. I don't even know if she has any aunts. But in my in my mood, in my dream, her aunt called and said, "I'm oh you know I'm filming Donnie Darko. I'm doing this rethinking of Donnie Darko." And I was like, "Tell your aunt, cast me as Damn. as the Sparkle Motion Mom. Cast me as the Sparkle dr- Motion Mom." I had a dream. I was opening a beer. Hmm. It's pretty good. That's slightly less interesting. Very less interesting, Gene. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I I just actually I have really weird dreams. All right. Oh Not God, bad. dang! I tell you what, man. I had like core five dreams. Um, I hate even going to sleep because damn, they're they're like horrifying dreams, you know. According to Terry Pratchett, this is a side effect of a side effect of being. A very magical person. Yeah, there you go. Your spark emotion, Gene. Very sparkly. <laughs> anyway, um, Gene. I'm, I'm looking in the mirror right now. It all looks really can you, can you even see yourself? <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I got headphones on. I'm talking to you. Yeah, oh, nice. Ugh. Are you going to start playing the horses and then I'm starting them uh, tucking? All fucking <laughs> silence of the lamp style? Buffalo Bill? Now, now let's have a talk about goodbye horses. 
That is, that, I tell you what, that is horseable. Uh, oh, no, no, I do remember Gene did not like fucking them songs of the Lions. Really? But did you like that song? Nah, Because honestly, I, mean, I listened was, to that, that song not, like on a I, really regular I would, basis. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even scary, dude. See? It wasn't this, this meant was, to be this scary. Was my, it was this supposed to be, be frightening. psychological and frightening. But at the same time, this is what happened when we watched Scary Things in the Dark with uh, Guillermo del Toro. Okay. Same thing, same thing. Anyway, but nothing to do with the film, just the song. If the song hadn't been in the film, uh, people associate that song with that film, but I think that song is just like so great. I love I'm Lazarus. I love her. Tell, I'm telling you straight up, Gargamel was way scarier than uh, Hannibal Lecter. If you're a Smurf. Damn, man, he was like eating some Smurfs and shit. I mean, if you're a Smurf. He never caught any, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, he never, yeah, caught, he never caught any. He didn't want to eat them anyway. He wanted their tails because they thought it was the the secret ingredient for turning lead to gold. He was an alchemist. Come on. Yeah. Well, I'm Get just your fucking Smurfs lore up. To cut I'm trying to no. be. You're thinking of robot chicken. Mm. Robot chicken. He blended them up. Okay. Like there, but... was a, there was a major flood. All the Smurfs got drowned. Anderson Cooper showed up just out of the blue. Was like, we're at the Smurf Village where there's been a major drown and catastrophe event, and a lot of people have drowned. It. And Gargamel is all pissed. Like, how the fuck does Anderson Cooper find them Smurf Village that I've been looking for for fucking 15 years? <laughs> and he's all pissed, and he's just out there just scooping up the damn drone, drowned Whoa. Smurfs, and he's he takes them home and blends them up and makes a damn sandwich, or Go tries to make a pizza a... in the robot chicken thing, and then he's just like, <laughs> oh, this is disgusting, That's... and then he throws away and orders a pizza. That's robot chicken, but I mean, I'm just talking straight. Yeah, I'm washing my straight hands. Straight. Wash your hands of it. I'm hanging up. Uh, this sounds suspicious. Um, Actually, no, let's just wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. Get, be, and be, we're going to continue the Smurfs conversation after we wrap it up because I'm, I'm done with the I, Smurfs I conversation. I need people to understand what alchemy is. People know what alchemy is if they look it up after What's this alchemy? podcast. Look it up, people. That's your weekend's damn uh, study. Go learn about alchemy. And then if but you they, figure out the recipe, call us, text us, and give us that so we can not So we can tell Gargamel. So we can Personal not tell Gargamel, and we can actually just kind of make a little bit more money and keep this podcast going on a fancier form. Where we have our own public Gar- studio and... and Gargamel was like Adolf Hitler or something. No, Gargamel was an alchemist, and he was a sadist. He's an alcoholic. An alchemist. Alchemist. He was trying to turn lead to gold. He was trying to turn lead into gold. That's all. Oh, God damn. What an idiot. He thought Smurf tails were the damn mm-hmm. the secret ingredient that did it. Mm-hmm. Smurfs had tails. This is but like people didn't pay attention to the thing mm-hmm. on the show. Yep. But if you're me and you pay attention to to you know alchemy or the story backdrop, or, or the probably story. first episode actually. I'm going back to dancing with snakes. It's horrible. <laughs> gosh, gosh, I love snakes, so that's fun. Venomous snakes. I don't try to come across myself. I grew up in Oregon. There are no venomous snakes there, so I don't really have a fear of snakes. Because I went out and caught snakes in the field when I was a child. Are you trying to speak that Harry Potter language? No, I'm just going Pentecostal. Parcel tongue? No, no he's just... Yeah, just and, and your tongue is parcel tongue. <laughs> I'm Pentecostal. I'm sometimes like speaking in tongues. They right just speak it in tongues. They were running cool. right through me. I'm just going to flop over all Beetlejuice style here. Okay, I'm going to have a thing where we talk about theology and the uh, Pentecost. Uh, there it is. There it is. There's happened. the accent. There's the accent. She's getting too deeply Southern. So, y'all, this is us <laughs> here at the damn Chainsaw Bar. We thank y'all for listening this hey, week. Hey, y'all. Thank y'all. It's Sorry. closing time. Y'all don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. So kiss our grits. Kiss my grits. Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, people. That's it. That's our episode. Hopefully you had a laugh. I'm pretty sure we're just going to go back into the bottle and cry a little bit. And um, <laughs> go back to work tomorrow. So I'm going to edit this. You'll probably hear about this. Damn, uh, today's uh, April 9th. You'll probably get this on April 18th. So enjoy it if it comes before that. Um, any closing thoughts? Make them quick. <clears throat> uh oh. I 
think we're like some cool walleyes. You're a fish stick. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Hmm. And Mighty, she's a fish stick too. Yeah, she's a fish stick too. But she's cooler than I am, but. I doubt uh, it. I, in, in fact, I'm cooler than most people. No, oh, God, 100%. <laughs> that's, why, that, that, that's why we did this podcast. <laughs> Everybody now listen, we're comedians and uh, don't take nothing serious or anything like that. Uh, Except for what I said about DMX. Not what Gene said, but what I said. That was from the heart. That was I meant that. Yeah. Shout out to DMX. But yeah, definitely, Gene, you're on point there. We're definitely comedians. We're definitely doing this for laughs. We're, we, there's some serious we're, bits, but most not as a good time. Yeah, we're here to talk shit. 100%, by God. Give us some hits. Give us some money. Because I'm poor. Smash that like button. And subscribe. And subscribe. We <laughs> <laughs> uh, always say smash that like button. Uh, it's like you can't just, like, Tap it with your finger like you actually oh, yeah. smash it and break your keyboard. Yeah, one hundred percent because uh, you can't even prescribe. You can't even scribe. I know. I'm just. I'm just. <laughs> yeah, that's just our YouTube. That's for our YouTube of, listeners. Of Thank you. YouTube. We like YouTube. All like ten of you. They all say that. that. That's smash. it. That's, you guys know it. You yeah, it's on there. Smash, smash up that. and subscribe. But uh, damn, we're poor and shit. Damn, come on down. Uh, just come on down to the butter barn. Like I God need them. Uh, 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 send up, uh, send up some cash. Cause uh, we're up to, we're almost up to a full pack of guns. Come on down to the chainsaw bar. Come on down to the chainsaw bar. It actually has to sing like contaminator. It does actually. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh man. Go. Because we're going to do the damn hoedown. It's a hoedown. That's actually the name of the song, too. It's the damn Chainsaw Bar hoedown. The Butter Barn hoedown. There you go. Uh, and then, uh, and, and, get and, and, and if you, it, now it, it, Epic it, Games is going to sue us. Our Epic, own state now. Our own game state. company is going to sue us now. I think, that, I think that the guy who is behind Epic Games is actually pretty fucking cool. Yeah. He, he, like a, he, like... Took over all that wilderness land and oh, preserving yeah. it and shit. Yeah, oh, like, yeah he's probably man. a cool dude. Think, yeah, he yeah, bought a bunch of damn wilderness and just preserves it. And I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, hell yeah. That's what you do. When you get money, you do 100, 100%. Other than buying everybody I'm, a I'm, mo- I'm moving to Alaska. Why? Yeah, man, huh? you'd hate Alaska. Gee. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean who are you? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! Okay, that's a flip, but yeah, they're practically the same thing. They're almost the same thing. The weather's so similar. They, they both have an A in the name. Uh, I forgot it's cold as fuck up there. Fuck that shit. Two A's. Two A's in the like, state. Damn, name. How many states them. can say that? They got a uh, sound in their name, so yeah, we. I think we only got one. Oh shit. Fuck that. Never run. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> Stop. Okay. All right, we're done. Let's wrap it up here. We what? thank you what? for the Chainsaw Bar. Please like, subscribe, whatever the hell you're going to do. Uh, just keep coming That's back and hearing us. We'll keep putting stuff out because we're not getting paid for this. We got, we're almost to, we haven't made a dollar off this we're film just, We're just bored. We're just <laughs> chilling. You're fucking pay us. I, I'm not setting up a Patreon. You two can do this. You two can do this. If you go get yourself one of these Blue Yeti mics and a computer off the back of a damn shady ass <laughs> truck or something. <laughs> God damn, you're going to play us by too. God. We're going to fucking hold you out. It's not going to kill you. Get your crazy ass friend and your sidekick. <laughs> damn, talk shit. Oh, 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 I thought of something I learned this week. Oh, <laughs> hit us, hit us, hit us. I'm just kidding. No threats. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I learned this from experience if you're in Appalachia and nowhere else. If you accidentally get ramps from the farmer's market that have the roots still on. And don't go on a gravel ridge. Then you can plant those the, the root end of the bulb and it'll grow up in your backyard. No matter no matter what. Because like there's no light back there. Yeah. The the soil quality is trash. It's a weed. Y'all, if you go to the farmer's market before you cuss out the vendor and tell them you really shouldn't pull out the roots, you should cut it above the roots, 
which is true, and and, yep. and do bother to tell them that. But look, if you get the roots, just replant them. They they grow, they grow, and then you get ramps. Free ramps. And if you if you and if you're going up a road and you need four wheel drive, don't do. Yeah, I agree with that. But like, if you if you're going up some dirt ass shit road and it needs four wheel drive, is it really worth going up there for? You're probably right. But also, if you got ramps from some like. Like, bad damn ramp hunter that doesn't give a shit about the damn continuation of the pranks and they left, took all the roots, grab all of them. Get them all. Get all those roots, cut them off, and then replant them somewhere where you want them to grow because they are sneaky little plants and they are delicious garlic. Because they're hot, weeds. Tasty weeds. They are weeds and they will grow. Right back, I'll tell you what, I got to wear out of that, I got this. They're amazing. Tasty. Yeah, they're. They're great. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. This is like my 45th year of life, and now I've actually become a a lover of ramps. Mm-hmm. Like, my entire life, they were cooked badly. I've never had good cooked ramps. They just stink up your entire house. You walk around smelling like them. But this year, like, Maddie's, like, been a wizard with ramps. And we've had ramp aioli. We've had ramp damn pesto. We've had ramps pickled. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I uh, put ramp, ramp greens and... Furikake in my miso today. Oh man. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Like mis like white miso with furikake and ramp grades. I'm mm. like I can I can live like that. I can Damn, what the hell was that? That was like What is furikake? Great. <laughs> it's it's a kind of Japanese rice seasoning that's like got like sugar and sesame seeds and and um. It's a sprinkly rice seasoning. Seaweed. Yeah, basically. you sprinkle it over rice. <laughs> or you can put it in your in your broth. Exactly. And I had miso broth, which is a soy based broth, a fermented Real, soybean broth. Yeah, it's just really basic, damn clear broth. Basic. Good. Basic, just Japanese soup broth. And I, I put ramps in that because I fucking wanted to. Throw a little Gigi paste, ginger garlic paste for those of you who don't Call do ginger, Gigi paste. Um, little ginger garlic. Throw a little fucking shot of uh, sriracha or some hot pepper flakes in there if you want to heat it up. Damn, that sounds like a damn a Latin dance. Well, a more like a Japanese dance, but yeah. <laughs> no, no, it sounds like a very sexy Latin dance to me. That sounds amazingly sexy. That's tasty sounding. Well, Japanese dancing can be sexy too. Yeah, it's not as damn <laughs> flamboyant. And it's just like, yeah. Well, but it wasn't Latin at all. It was all completely Japanese, except for the ramps. <laughs> the ramps. But there we go. All right, there's your lesson. Um, I really don't know how to tell you that, because that's amazing. Because... Ramps yeah, are great. I'll make you some tomorrow. Yeah, I'm definitely. Down. I'm, I'll be at work. Because normally I, I just, I'll cut some like green onions in my, in my bra. Mm-hmm. But all right, there we go. So that's it. That's all we got this week on the Chainsaw Bar. We appreciate you all listening. Mm-hmm. We've already did the boom and buzz super crap, crap. So um, that's it. That's it. I ain't gonna do anything else. This is gonna take me an hour forty-five to then listen back to and then edit out a couple things and take off like two minutes of it. So. <laughs> We love you, you all. You just wiped away an invisible tear. Yeah. It happened. You didn't see it? Well, I, th- I, well, I, think, I think his two are horrible. Mm-hmm. Thank you. But I love it. You were also horrible. <laughs> You're also horrible for not watching enough Mel Brooks. And mm. loved. Yeah, no. Damn it, man. All right. Damn it, man. So, from us here at the Chainsaw Bar, the end. On three, uh, boys and uh, girls. Uh, Salute. Ready. Steady. One, two, three, vroom, 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 vroom,